Yeah, so my name is Jerome Hagen, and I work for Xbox at Microsoft. And uh, my job role is that I am a user researcher. So I uh, work together with teams developing all sorts of different games to help them get feedback from players to make the experience better for all kinds of players. And then in addition, uh, one of the other things I do is I also lead the uh, Team Xbox LGBTQ uh, group that is focused on uh, better inclusion of uh, queer and trans uh, employees and uh, players and content in our products. I think about that a little differently. I think I think uh, I often think about uh, that there's a lot of market potential that developers are missing out on right now, and so I think a lot of a lot of kind of expanding the canvas of what games are is actually an opportunity for them to make more money than they're making now because there's so many people out there who they don't see something that seems welcoming that to them they don't define themselves as a gamer, they don't, uh, they haven't had the experience that says, hey, I, I want to play games, I want to play these types of games, and it's, it's a pretty unusual thing, because, yeah, if you think about other media, it's other creative media, there aren't, people are like, no, I'm not really into the written word, or I'm, I'm not really into, to video or or music or things like that, but games is a different thing that I think there's just a ton of opportunity space there that I think there's room for a lot more different kinds of ideas than are out there right now. Absolutely, yeah, I think, I mean, I think it is something like uh, a lot of different media that there's there are stories or experiences that are really meaningful to people and sometimes those are sometimes those are stories of what happens that opens up new possibilities to them sometimes it is a character who has an emotional experience or a journey that that really opens their eyes to something or is something that for the first time they're seeing an experience that reflects their own and really can change change the way they think of things knowing there are other people out them like that having that experience and um, and then I think also I mean there are there are games that I mean that have all sorts of different things in them that in them that force you to make hard choices or think about the impacts of things or think about what violence means in the world and that can really open people's eyes and in a way that like if you're just passively taking something in it it may not hit as hard as actually experiencing it and having to interact with it in a way that that really really makes it hit home There are some genres that have kind of very narrow experiences, and each game in that genre doesn't vary a lot. And so, it's I would say for some for some games, there's the maybe your first experience with it changes something, but continuing to play it doesn't open it up as much as kind of the creative possibilities that are out there. Okay, so sort of repetition in the media actually decreases impact. Is that sort of the idea? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, or I think or. Uh, I think often, in general, with humans seeing something different or being made to think about something in a different way can can it really can really change things. And often, things you are very familiar with, like in some ways, your kind of your analytical or uh, your emotional reaction that you may have just isn't there because it's just so so familiar and it's and that and that's perfectly valid too I mean there's a, gaming can absolutely be a thing like it is here for me to relax it's here for me to decompress it is here for me to turn my brain off but there are also tons of games out there that that can engage you in new ways actually uh, last night at the 
at the um, Independent Games Festival, uh, one of, there was a brand new award there that was sponsored by Xbox, which is the Gaming for Everyone Award. And there were three games that were recognized there. Um, one is I Hope, which is a game that is made for uh, kids uh, going through cancer treatment and helping, and that is set in a fantasy world, but it is, you are fighting the villain of cancer and it's something that that helps helps kids going through that have another way to talk about and experience that. And then another is uh, We Are Chicago, which uh, is uh, about the effect of uh, gang violence on people in Chicago. And then uh, the third one is a game called A Hero's Call, which is a game, uh, it's a role-playing game that's made by uh, developers who are blind, uh, created for blind, uh, blind gamers uh, to be able to experience genres of games that aren't, typically aren't accessible if you, uh, if you have low vision. Definitely from the perspective of Xbox, uh, we have uh, the Gaming for Everyone isn't just the name of an award, it's actually uh, the, a big focus that we have within, uh, within uh, Xbox as a whole. And it's something where we want Xbox and gaming industry overall to be a place where everyone can have fun. So there are people who may have never seen experiences that they have represented or have never been able to interact in a game in a way that they wanted. And uh, it's something that we really want to support. And so we, we have different kinds of ways we, support, ways we support development, but all of those uh, games went through our ID at Xbox program, which is our independent developer program where we can uh, which are often smaller games people with very deep passions that uh, we want them to be able to enable want to be able to enable them to explore uh, exactly what they want to explore in gaming and get that out in the world and reach those players they really want to reach game developers don't always see like the kind of knock-on effects of decisions they make and sometimes those can can lead to uh, bad experiences for players that lead them they can lead lead them to decide this type of game isn't for me or gaming in general isn't for me that's something that nobody wants to happen but we wanted to put a lot more focus behind it so probably the more common situation right now in gaming is that there are a lot of people who want to make things better but they don't know where to start and that's where something where kind of an organization wide uh focus like gaming for everyone gives them a place to go so they can say okay what what can i do to better include people and what does that mean for games cool. yeah and actually one example um so uh, Microsoft on Xbox and Windows 10, we have a game called Killer Instinct, which is a fighting game, and there are um, lots of different characters from uh, from different cultures represented in there. And there's a um, this is a remake of a game that came out 25 years ago or so. Um, so, so a lot of those were kind of replicating those those characters, and there's character in the um, original game called Chief Thunder that uh, originally he um, based on kind of based on where things were in the world at the time he, he was kind of created as a I'd say just a generic Native American character um, and I think that's I think every fighting game at that time they had generic versions of lots of cultural uh, of people of different cultures uh, but it was something that uh, with the new version they uh, took a look at that and said hey we can do better and uh, it's something that they actually got in contact with the Nez Pierce tribe um, to talk to them about how uh, Chief Thunder could be a representative uh, based on because the visuals of the character were some were some things from from that tribe and that culture and that was something that they wanted to make the the identity and the culture of the character something that, something that more closely aligns so they so they worked together with the tribe to both make sure the visuals were things that were accurate and authentic to the culture and then also to work with them to, to create a uh, backstory for the character that was actually a true deep representation of the culture and things that the um, that the Nedge Pierce wants the world at large to better understand about their culture and their history.
So there is some, I'm trying to think of things that are public versus non-public, which is always the, the thing in industry. Uh, I think an example of something that that definitely is public, it's a, um, I'd say it's it's research done in, with academic rigor, but it's being done by a commercial company, but they they share out a lot of their data. So there's, there's a company called uh, Quantic Foundry that uh, does uh, research on what motivates players to play games. And... Uh, they they have done some research that shows uh, some interesting patterns in terms of how different kind different kinds of players may be excluded from certain kinds of games. So, for example, um, if you have a game that is a competitive game where you're playing multiplayer against other people. Uh, that's something that the uh, the people who are most motivated by that are uh, young males, and um, young females are not as motivated by it. But uh, one thing that's really interesting is that for both males and females, as you get older, uh, everybody is less motivated by competition. So something when you get two people who are age 40 or older, they both the uh, motivation for competition is both low and there's no gender differences there. So it's something when you think about a game that the only thing you can do is compete against other people, you're probably leaving out everybody who is older and also especially leaving out uh, younger women.